cheap Porsches and electrical problems. Welcome back to the channel guys. We're gonna continue on the Porsche today with where we left off in the last episode with some interior goodies. I've got a few more parts to install today to finish up what we started last time. And I've got some further diagnosing to do as well. Now, if you've been following along with this build, you know that I got this car in not so great condition. I got it for a relatively cheap price, but the price of repairs is going up and up and up, which was to be expected. I've said this before, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would have never purchased this car because it wouldn't have been a great investment, but it is pretty great for YouTube. This car was apparently owned by a doctor who traded it in on an Audi R8. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I do know that the doctor did not take care of this car in any way, shape, or form. That's evident by the poor condition of the interior parts, the exterior parts, the maintenance, even go as far as a tire. So when I got the car, the tires were bald. It had check engine lights on it. It had mismatched parts. It had cheap parts. Just basically wasn't taken care of at all and was modified in very poor taste. You can see that the interior was not kept in great condition either. And this is even after I've already taken hours and hours cleaning it. The door panels are pretty beat up. The seats are pretty beat up. The dash is pretty beat up. The center console, paint peeling on it, and it's just overall in bad shape. In the last episode, thanks to Renline, got some carbon fiber door armrests installed, which replaced the factory ones, which were in very, very poor shape, probably the worst part of the door panels. Also installed new carbon fiber door sills and all new pedals, including the dead pedal, the clutch, the brake, and the throttle. These are all from Renline, and they look really, really nice in there. Now, I still have the passenger side door sill to do, which I couldn't do because of the position the car is in, in the middle of a wheel bearing replacement. So I've got to do that. I've got to diagnose the window on the other side. I believe I have some faulty wiring. And we're also going to get into some new parts from Renline. Redline sent out their floorboards for the driver's side and passenger side. I think these are going to look really nice in there behind those nice new pedals. And I even have one for the passenger side as well. On top of that, I got one of their shift knobs because mine is really, really beat up and nasty. Not from Redline. I got this off of eBay. This is a sort of custom shift boot. The seller can customize it pretty much however you want it. I opted for Alcantara with yellow stitching to kind of match the rest of the interior. The headliner is Alcantara yellow stitching on the seats and door panels. I think it's gonna look really nice in there. So first I wanna start with the driver's side floorboard, which is gonna be a very simple install. Got the driver's side floorboard in, but I only have it in with one screw. And I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me, I broke probably like six drill bits. So you're supposed to drill through the carpet and through basically the, the firewall slash kind of floor to get a second screw in. But just, I, I don't know what, I don't know what it's made out of. I couldn't even tell you, like unobtainium or something. It's weird, I, I can't drill through it. So for now the floorboard's just in with one screw 
and it seems solid. If it becomes a problem, I'll readdress it, but I got so frustrated breaking all these drill bits, I just gave up. But it looks good in there. Now, before I shift the car back and get to working on the passenger side, I'm gonna work on the shifter. Just come off. Oh, well, whatever YouTube video I watched was wrong. Anyway, it's off. Hopefully the shift boot goes a little smoother than the floorboard. So I really just need to take this off and see how this new one fits. seems to fit together really, really nicely. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue in a couple of places, because I think the factory one is hot glued in here. I think this is remnants of glue. Well, that's where I'm gonna replicate some glue in hopes that that'll hold it nice and tight. But otherwise, I think that's gonna look really good. This is pretty easy to do. Redline shift knob is designed to use this little o-ring to kind of hold it together with the OEM shift boot but with this aftermarket one I think I'm going to use a zip tie it's going to be a little more secure with this Alcantara that's thicker and I want to make sure this knob is in there really nice and, and tight and looks good. See the nice groove that they have there for the o-ring that's right where I'm going to do the zip tie. That should hopefully hold that on there really nice and tight. That looks nice. I'm really pumped with how that looks. Let's go stick it in the car. I had to trim this top down just a little bit to get this to fit. If I don't like it, this piece is, you know, an OEM unit, it's pretty easy to replace. Pretty slick boys. Way, way better than what was in there before. The metal knob feels really, really nice. That is a nice piece. All in all, this feels really, really solid, especially with the fact that I rebuilt the shifter uh, a few months back. So that's feeling pretty good. Now to clarify, I had to trim the shift arm down just a little bit. It's not because of the knob, it's because of the shift boot. The shift boot is designed to work with the factory knob. The factory knob is longer, goes down lower. So without trimming that, my shift boot would not be long enough. If you're looking to get this shift boot, shift knob combination, possibly contact the guy that makes the shift boot and he can probably make it a little bit longer for you. I may end up doing as well. Big thanks to Renline for sending out all these parts. They're awesome. I'll have all of them linked below like usual. figure out a way to get the car back this way so I can get the passenger door fully open and install all the rest of this stuff.
That should be good enough. Fastener side floorboard is going to be super easy because it just uses double sided tape to get on there. It's also Velcro so you can remove it. You can also remove this bracket from the actual floorboard itself. So I just need to make sure my carpet is nice and clean, which it already is because I cleaned it before. I'm just going to give it like another vacuum. It's like a perfect fit. It's pretty hard to screw up, actually. Oh, yeah. There's some good looking pieces right there. It's coming along. Come along. Need to bang out this other door sill before moving on to the next project. Now to the fun part. Using any racer wheel isn't exactly my idea of fun. But new carbon fiber parts are definitely my idea of fun. Beautiful. I'm gonna bring my attention to passenger side door and uh, figure out why it's doing weird stuff. Weird stuff every time I touch the wires in here. Yeah, it makes the window go up and out a little bit sometimes. It, it sounds like it's trying to make the door lock and it's doing some things inside the car, so I gotta see if there's a wiring issue or if it's just the door latch. So I'm gonna start removing some parts um, and try to get a closer look at the door latch and see if that's the problem. Disconnect the battery so I don't lose a finger by trying to get in here and get things disconnected. Now that the latch isn't connected, I want to hook the battery back up and now wiggle these wires and see what happens. That's going to tell me if it's a wire issue or an actual latch module issue. A lot of the weird is happening now. So, looks like I'm going to be ordering a new latch. I also need to get the tool, the square head, whatever, 12 point thing to get the latch off, which I don't have. I thought I did. So I got to order that, order a new latch. See you guys in a couple days.